Friends, today I'm going to do a video for my cousin Eric, who is going to help me shoot my niece's wedding. Rachel, uh, congratulations. I wish I could be there. Something has come up and I have to shoot a graduation for a bunch of doctors uh, for my residency program right when your wedding is. I'm going to do all the editing on Rachel's uh, wedding video. And probably I think Eric will do just as good a job as I would anyway. But anyway, I'm shooting the video, so Eric's going to shoot it. But I'm going to give Eric some uh, some hints and some directions and things. Since uh, he just wants to know about my gear and what to do, I'm going to oversimplify this. I'm going to share it with the world too. There may be some facts or some things here that other people might want to hear or learn. Or if you want to get into wedding video and you and you don't even know where to start, this might be where to start and how to start. I'm going to start first with the tripods we're going to use. I'm going to tell Eric to shoot. Uh, a good bit of the shots handheld, uh, the kind of the intimate shots, the kind of uh, behind the scenes shots, because he's going to help me shoot a few of those, like uh, maybe uh, you know, before the wedding, uh, preparation, getting her dress and everything on, hanging out with her friends, uh, Rachel, and maybe a little bit of the groom too, Austin, and um, get to hang with him, see what's going on. Anything that that you think that the bride or the groom might want to see after the fact. A little bit of pre-wedding, that's fine to share and it's awesome. So you can do that. We'll do that handheld and not use tripods. But I'm going to show the tripods that I use and I've got two specific ones that I like and they're very simple to use. Um, this one's a, Z a Zome v, uh, VT111. I call it Zome. I guess that's what it is. Zami, Zome. These legs just telescope out by pulling these clips out like so like that and you clamp them back down super quick to set up this these tripods will use when you're actually shooting the real wedding i just think it's good to get a couple of uh, maybe two angles where you just have a good solid not non-moving type uh, shot and i've got a two camera set up one for a wide angle and one with a zoom so eric can uh, zoom in uh, with one of those this one's really cool. So you just extend the legs, you pull this thing. Now I usually keep these things tightened down a little bit. You can unloosen this little, this little knob right here and it allows you it more easily to go up and down like that, see? That's what tightens it and holds it, holds it uh, this, little, this, this little turny thing right here, right? The way you release this top, this mounting block, this is called, you just pull this. I like the way this one works. It goes all, pull it all the way out to a point where it locks. And it has a little silver thing that comes up here and locks it. And the way you get this thing out of here is you just pull it back toward the uh, lever and then it lifts right out, right? And this is the camera I would recommend you use uh, for, the, for the moving shots. I've got a long lens on it, an 18 to 135, so you can zoom in. It zooms this way. We'll talk more about the camera here in a minute. But so you put the uh, mounting block on. I usually put the little button, the little small button forward and then the screw in the middle and it goes right into the hole there and you just tighten it up. It doesn't have to be super tight, just good and snug. Tighten it up like that and then fold this thing down so it'll go in the hole. If it's sticking up, that uh, thing's sticking up, it won't go down on this, on this uh, tripod mount here. So you gotta make sure it's folded down, a little silver thing. And it's cool, the way you go in with this is you go just the opposite. It, it, your, your mounting block is going to push that little silver pin right there down and that's going to let everything snap in place. So you, you take it, you turn it sideways like this, you just go in like that and you press down with your right hand. And when it pushes a little button down, it tightens this, this thing fl flaps back and it puts it securely in there like that. I like this tripod a lot because it moves almost like a fluid head tripod. It's not a fluid head tripod, but it, it does, like I say, move like that. So what I'm gonna do to, to make it go up higher, there's a knob right here that you do this and you loosen it and you got a little crank and you can crank it on up. This tripod goes pretty high. It goes about, I'm gonna guess about five foot, six inches or something like that. Maybe, maybe about that high. 65 inches, I would say. And then you've got a good, uh, smooth kind of movement here. You probably don't want to lock this thing down. This, this makes it stay in one spot and not go left and right. We don't want to do that. I keep out loose. 
and you can loosen this up a little bit again if you want to be able to go a little bit more easily that way. The thing I try to do with a wedding though, and almost all my video is less is more. If you're sitting here and you're zooming in and out all the time, or you're going left and right all the time, or you're going up and down all the time, almost constantly, then the video becomes totally unusable and it does not look professional. The best thing to do is get it in focus, and I have my lenses set to AF for autofocus. There's a little AF or uh, manual focus there, but I usually use set everything to autofocus. As long as you don't have like a limb or something in front of that, or something, you want to get, make sure you're in an unobstructed place where all you're seeing is the, the bride and groom together with the preacher or whatever up there where they're getting married. So as long as you don't have something in front that it gets focused on, it will automatically focus on the bride and the groom. So that is how you mount these cameras up and they move very smooth. This, this one in particular, uh, depending on how you loosen it or tighten it, it has very smooth movements. So say the bride is walking down the aisle, you can follow her real nice and careful this way. And this is this one's, to me, it's, it looks just like a, what we call a fluid head tripod, even though it's not quite, I don't think it is a fluid head. Enough said about that one. Let me show you the other tripod that I like to use. And there's a reason I use this one. This one is a Sunpack. 7000 Ultra that I got, gosh, I don't know, six or seven years ago. I like this one because it just goes way up high. And the, and, uh, the reason that's important, the reason I would use this, I would put the uh, wide angle uh, shot, that I'm, the wide angle camera that I've got set up for you uh, on this one, because you can get it way up higher above the crowd. This one st extends a bit longer than the other one does, so you got more of these things to, to flip. Just do them all at once, pull it all out, telescope it out and lock them down. So let's say they say, I'll rise. I was at a wedding one time where the preacher told everybody to rise for the bride. The bride comes in and then he forgot to tell them to sit down. <laughs> and they got like two thirds of the way through the, uh, the uh, wedding service before the preacher might remember to tell everybody to sit down. If I hadn't had a tall tripod, all I'd have been seeing was the back of people's heads. So I was glad I had, I had a tripod similar to this. This was even better than the one I had then. So with this one, you just turn this little knob right here and, and that releases this. There's no crank on this one. And there's a little, this actually comes out and it can be a monopod. And you can use that as a, as a monopod to, uh, to walk around and shoot video, go way up high with it, go way down low with it. You can see you can take it out of there but it has a little thing that says stop here on it. So there's a little line right there and a little arrow pointing down to it. It says stop here. And that tells you how far you can go uh, outside of the, of the, uh, of this, of this, the legs, the legs set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. And so you see this one goes a bit higher than the other one. This one goes up, gee whiz, almost, with the camera on there, I'd say we're about six foot. I'm, si I'm six two. So this is the uh, camera we're gonna use for this. The other one was a Sony A6600. This one is an A6400. The reason I, I like to use this one, this has a, it came with a good little wide angle lens, a 16 to 50, and uh, it is a Sony lens. And the thing I like about it big time is that it gets a really nice wide angle that is good and sharp. This camera, the 6400, does not have a stabilization. So it, it shoots great video, great 4K video, and I'll have you sit up in 4K mode so that we'll shoot the video the right way. But I like this one uh, to use for a still shot because it does not have the stabilization, but still it looks great and this lens looks fantastic on it. So I'm gonna take, I should have took this off already. Again, the same way, you just flip this out. This one does not have a locking mechanism though. So I'm gonna put it back down a little bit so you can see this. This one, you just have to open it up and hold it with your finger and then get the mounting block out. So again, I'll put the little black button there forward on it. And what that does, that, that allows you to see your little bubble in the back to get it level. You don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, now, I don't know, I think this wedding's gonna be outside. I will show you what I do to level 
things up if, if you're in a slightly off off level surface that you're shooting. So again, you just pull this in, tighten it up, push the little thing down so that it's nice and flat. And so with this one, you're gonna have to pull this out with your thumb and then just put it in there and then lock it down. Push it in and lock it down. It can't go anywhere. I'll go ahead and pull this back up. Now let's say that you're outside and the ground that you're on is just a little bit unlevel and you're not, you're not uh, quite at, at level. Uh, this doesn't have a, a, a rock. I mean, you do have a little bit of, a, of an adjustment here if you wanted to go left or right this way and raise this thing up or down, see? But let's say that it's the opposite direction and you, and you can't do that. What I do, I put the tripod with, you got three legs, I put two back here toward me and I put one in front like that. And if I have to lean it a little bit this way or that way, that by doing it this way, if I have the, the, the one, I have the third leg going forward and like straight toward what I'm gonna shoot, if the camera's not level this way, then I just can do one of these and I can adjust it a little bit that way. Let's say, let's say that I'm on a ground where there's a high place over here. And then by doing that, I can two or three inches this way or that way, I'll pull it back out. Let's say the ground is high on this side over here, you know, where it's like this. I'll just take that and pull it and pull this up until I get to where it's going to be level. And that's how I adjust the levelness this way. Levelness this way doesn't matter. That's just a matter of you just turning it up or down whichever way you think looks best. This one again has, a, it's not as sophisticated as the other tripod, but you can lock down the uh, left and right angle. It's a little bit, it's just a little bit sticky. It's not fluid head lock at all. And then you just do this up and down like that. And so there you go. That's how you mount, you put the mounting block on and how you set the tripods up. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. What I always do, I don't leave the mounting blocks on the camera. Sometimes you get in a hurry and you do that. If you ever lose your mounting block, for your tripod, sometimes they're just very hard to find or obtain another one that's just right because there's so many different sizes of them. I always, when I'm through shooting with a tripod, I take them 30 seconds and I go ahead and take these things off and put them right back on there so they're not lost. That's the way I keep everything together. I've learned my lesson about that. I have lost tripod mounting blocks before and then the tripod basically becomes useless. You might spend a hundred bucks on a good tripod and then you got nothing. So there we go. I usually don't leave these things sticking out. I go to the side where there's, usually there's a knob here, there's like a handle or something here, almost every tripod. I spin it around to the side where there's nothing and then I go down like that. And then the tripod folds up nice and neat. I'm gonna do that with this other tripod and this other one. This camera is a Sony A6600, which is a really great new, Fairly affordable camera. This is about 1200 bucks. And uh, I can't remember if the lens might've been a separate deal here. I got a sp some kind of special that I think uh, B&H Photo was running. So I'm gonna take the mounting block off for when, when I'm not using this. We're gonna talk about the camera for a minute. I'll put it back in here. Is Again, just slide it in sideways, push it down. The little thing here locks it in, locks it into place. Put the camera down for a moment. Let's go ahead and fold this up. What you can do, you don't have to always crank this thing if you've loosened this up, just particularly to push it down and just gently push it. And it'll go all the way down like that on its own. And you can lock it in. And fold these up. Again, on this one, you just look for the side that has the least amount of stuff on it. Got a handle here, got a knob here. Got a little bit of leveler here, but that's not bad. I bring it over to this side and I go down and it fits right in there like that. And that way I'm able to fold it up nice and neat too. These things are pretty lightweight. This one weighs maybe two and a half pounds, maybe three pounds, the other one maybe two pounds. So these are the two cameras. The A6600 has great optical stabilization. 
So in other words, if you're doing a little bit of this or that, it smooths it out somewhat. You still don't want to be herky-jerky. I always try to hold the camera as still as I can hold it. You got your, uh, I got a nice lens on this. This lens does zoom. To zoom, you just grab this bit. You got two rings here, a focus ring on the outside. That's this one on the outside. You probably won't even use that because we're gonna keep it on autofocus. And you got this big one on the inside that just zooms. You see, it zooms the lens in and out. So you can get close-ups. And, and as I say, get your zoom set and then just shoot. Don't be doing a whole lot of this. You know, the only time I ever do a whole lot, do that much is like, say there's a big landscape and there's a pretty mountain or off in the distance. I might start recording and then I just real slowly bring it back and do a reveal. Try to go smooth. I try not to like stop and start. You know, I try to just go to the whole, the whole motion nice and smooth. That's what makes it look more professional when you do your, your transitions and your camera movements and your zooms and stuff. Nice and slow, actually. Unless you're shooting a kung fu movie. <laughs> yeah, then, then maybe you have some crazy uh, Quentin Tarantino or, uh, you know, uh, say old, old top 70s kung fu quick zooms and stuff. But, you know, her wedding's not a kung fu movie. One thing to remember is there's a little green auto here on this dial up on top. We always want to leave it set to that. No need to go to anything else for, a, for an event like this. If we were going to do some really fancy stuff, there are reasons and times that you would go to, uh, to that. There, there's even a little movie thing here, but I, a lot of times, since it really focuses well in auto, I like to just leave it in auto and then just push this red button right here, and that's going to record the video. First, let's turn the camera on, though, just so you see. If you got this little dial, just leave it where it's green. You see the little white thing in the green? I'll, do. I'll just leave it like that. You got a little toggle switch up on top here that goes off and on. You just grab this little bitty nub of a thing right here and you just, hang on a second, pull it back to the little white thing is on, on. So right now the camera's on. You see it says low light and it says black. That's because I haven't taken the lens off yet. So you got your lens cap here. I usually just put that in my pocket so I don't lose it. And there we're seeing, really we're seeing what we get if we're gonna shoot a picture. Now, if you want to shoot some pictures for the sake of shooting pictures for fun, all you gotta do is hit the shutter thing up on top up here. You just point and you shoot the picture. And I shot a picture of the GoPro that I'm shooting this video with. Here's the thing though, one of the things that'll trip you up, if you ever look and you're not seeing your, anything on your screen back here, it's because you've covered up the eyepiece. A lot of times I'll be shooting and, uh, and like maybe this little piece of uh, something here will go in front of the eyepiece. Look what happens, it goes dead. It senses that that's being covered. So if you ever lose your screen, it's probably because you have something in front of the eyepiece. And you can shoot the pictures and the video by staring through there if you want to, if that's what you prefer to do. I almost always shoot the video though using the viewfinder. This viewfinder, if you need to go up or down with it, it does pull out like so if you had the, the camera up high and you wanted to point it down sit in a chair you could do that and still monitor what you're seeing usually though i just keep it right there like that so all you got to do is frame up the video make it look the way you want it to look and then push this little tiny red button here where your thumb is this is the record button on a sony a6400 6500 6600 i have all those cameras you push this little red button and you see a little REC down here, and you see the time advancing, a little red REC for record. Right now I'm recording video. Now you may have noticed that this screen changed a little bit. I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna push the red button again to stop. And it'll go back to a different view. This is what's called, this is more of, I guess, a 4.3 type pixel aspect. This is showing you what you'd see if you're shooting a photo. When you go to, to do this, it'll expand a little. And that's really, when you got to go to this one, when you're recording, that's really what you're gonna see. To zoom in, you do that. To zoom out, you go back. I'll show you how that's working. Zoom in this way. Zoom out this way. And there you go. Right now we're recording. All you have to worry about, three buttons. We turn it off, to turn it off, you push this back. Let's go over it all again. 
Take the lens cap off. Make sure this is set to auto on the little dial up on top up here. This little nub here, like I say, <laughs> make sure the white where it says off now, we're gonna go to on, like so. Make sure there's nothing in front of that or you'll, or you'll lose your, your monitor. And then you line it up and you hit record. One thing I will say though, one more kind of, it's not a pro tip, just a regular tip. Let's say you're having trouble getting it to focus for some reason. Somehow, you know, first thing to check is make sure it's on AF on your, on your lens here. There's also a little bitty button right here that says AF, MF, and I always keep it pushed up, the, the white toward the AF, MF. And, but if you want to check your focus, then zoom in, to, let's say I'm gonna zoom in on a monitor over there, and that monitor looks out of focus. If I press and hold this shutter key up here like I'm getting ready to take a picture, but don't press it all the way down, it'll focus. Let's, let's, let's go back to that monitor. Hang on, there it is. I'm gonna press and hold it, and automatically it went into focus. I don't know if you could see that. Let's see if we could find something else to focus on, maybe. Here's the back of the Line 6 Helix, and it's out of focus. Now I'm gonna press the little button on top, just gently, not all the way down. And all of a sudden, it goes totally into focus there. What it does is, is by pushing this little button, you're telling it to go ahead and focus. When I say the little button, it's the shutter on top. And that tells it what to focus on. So if you zoom in on the bride and she's not quite in focus, just very gently, this is before you shoot video, right? Very gently push down on the shutter thing. Don't go all the way down. Don't go to a point where it goes, you don't want to go and snap it. You want to just push halfway down. And all of a sudden you'll see a lot of little focus points pop up and it'll go into focus. It's a cool tip, just so you know that. Once you've got it ready to go, all you do is push this tiny red button here where your thumb usually is. The REC stop starts and it starts to advance. We've got one, two, three, we're shooting my studio here now. To stop it, you push the red button again to turn it off that. Really, there's only two buttons to worry about. This one just, the dial is just make sure it stays set on the green. Turn it on. If you need to do a, a man, sort of a manual focus or make it focus, force it to focus, Zoom in on what you're gonna be shooting. Hold this halfway down and it will focus. And you can just push that button right there. Very simple camera. I like to stay in auto for things like this. If there are other more sophisticated things I'm doing for, for photogra photography or videography, then I might go into some of the different modes, aperture, priority, shutter priority, things like that. Lots of different manual settings. But honestly, you can shoot an awesome wedding and just stay in auto. Let me go to the other camera for a second. Now again, you can shoot handheld video with this one too. Just be sure you're holding steady as you can. It does not have all the steady. If you, if you tend to be a little shaky, you'll see that more with this camera. This is the 6400, A6400. I'm going to show you how you put batteries and things in this too if your battery runs out. So I'm on off now. It works exactly the same way. First, I'm gonna take the lens cap off, put it in my pocket so I don't lose it. I'm gonna use the little toggle up here, go to on. Same kind of thing. If you cover the eyepiece, your monitor goes black. If you let a piece of this or something go in front of it, a lot of times it'll go black. Just be sure nothing goes in front of that unless you wanna put your eye up to it. Same kind of deal. I leave everything in auto. Now this one does zoom. You've actually got a zoom here where you can zoom with your finger. If you push this thing up and down, it'll zoom. Sort of a, kind of a cool little, little zoom function right there. I don't use that though usually. Usually I just do this. So I just zoom like that right there. That ring right there is your, is your zoom ring. You see the zoom is pretty good. The thing this does though, when you set this one to fully wide, it gets a really good wide shot. So this might be good if you want to get the whole, put this in the back and get the whole crowd of people and see the whole pulpit and everything. Or you might decide you want just a medium view. If there's a whole lot of nothing out here to the left and right, then you don't want to do that. You don't want to show how a whole lot of nothing. You want to frame it up on something that looks cool. Just frame it up on whatever you think looks good. Again, if you, if you were to zoom in and it not be in focus, again, you just push down on the, halfway down on the shutter, 
and it will pick, uh, these little green dots come up there, I don't know if you can see them, little green dots and they pick a focus area. So now everything's nice and sharp and in focus there, I can back out, everything's in good focus. And again, the record button is right here where your thumb is. You click that, REC again, and you see the one, two, three, four down here advancing. To stop recording, you push the button again. Easy, easy as, you, as can be. Turn it off, pull this back, push it back, it's off. Put the lens cap back on, we'll do that. So I'm gonna put the lens cap back on the uh, A6400. It's a very small little lens on this one. You gotta be real careful to keep the lens clean. And you know, if you go from like say a steamy area where there's a lot of humidity inside another place, it might cause this to fog up. So sometimes I'm not totally opposed if you got a nice soft shirt on, just reach up here and, and rub the lens a little bit. So we're gonna put the lens cap back on this to protect the lens. About batteries, uh, so the battery slot is back out here in the bottom. This is on the 6600, the fancier one. It's got a bigger, heavier battery in it. Uh, you push this little blue butt, blue blue toggle in there. It's a little blue toggle in there, a little hinge thing, you that, and it put it drops right out. And then it, it, you, when you put it back in, you can look in there and see there's only one way it'll go in. You can't turn it the other way; it won't even go in. You put it in this way, push it in with your thumb, it locks down. You close it back up. The SD card goes right in here, right there it is, but you don't even have to fool with it. Same thing with the A6400. We'll take a look at that one right quick. This one, it's, it's not quite as substantial a camera as that other one. This is not nearly as fancy. Instead of the little blue thing being here, it's up here. You push it that way, it pops right out. Smaller battery, and you just put it right back in the way that it came out like that. I've got three or four batteries you got. I got three batteries for the 6600. That's enough to shoot maybe three and a half hours, maybe four hours with three batteries. And then I've got about eight or nine batteries for this one. So you could shoot for a long time uh, with either one of these. But you know, you'll probably get about an hour out of this one. Uh, but here again, what am I looking for at this wedding? Just a few tips. Uh, a nice wide shot. And then the, the one with the, with the thing on it here, some nice close-ups. You can stand in the back. What I tend to try to do is take this camera, the one that, that's on the good tripod and it has the zoom, and I try to maybe move over to one way or the other. Usually the, the groom's on this side, the bride's on this side. So what I try to do is go way over here somewhere, not too far, but you know, put the, the one camera, the wide angle, kind of dead center, and move back over this way so I can see more of the bride's face. It's more about the bride than it is the groom. You know, theoretically though, you could do both. You could have one, one tripod sitting right here and the other one sitting right beside, and it's fine either way. But if I were to pick one or the other to make sure I totally get the face, try to get the bride with the close-ups. And just zoom in on the bride, get all that smiley, happy, cool stuff. And a lot of times I'll put a, a, a zoom, uh, voice recorder up in the pulpit somewhere. I don't think it's gonna be necessary for this wedding. I do that so you can hear the audio a little bit better. But maybe they'll be mocked up. I think the preacher will definitely, I, I'm assuming. They're gonna be getting married in a beautiful place in Fletcher. I don't know of any way you could put microphone a microphone out there and it not be probably in the way. And one of the easiest things to forget is if you set a microphone up, you'll remember your cameras very often I've just walked away and left my microphone sitting on, sitting on a monopod somewhere hidden. <laughs> you have to think about that. Since you're doing this as a favor for me, I don't want, to have, want you to have to think about much. This is the camera I would use if you're gonna go around and shoot, like I say, just candid shots. Shoot shots after the wedding. You don't have to use a tripod anymore. Just make sure that the thing is off the bottom so that it's easier for you to carry around and just go around shooting to your heart's content and getting cool videos. If you wanna shoot photos, this thing shoots amazing photos. You can leave it on auto. Just you're gonna, you're gonna shoot photos with this. This is the shutter shutter uh, function up on top. You're gonna shoot videos always with the little red thing. And that's about all there is to say. Uh, well, one of the reasons I got my cousin Eric doing this is because Eric is sort of a sentimental, cool guy who 
probably is not as jaded as me. <laughs> I'm honestly not a really good wedding videographer. I've probably shot 50 weddings in my life. And um, I'm just not, I, I would say I'm, I'm a marginal wedding videographer. I'm a great wedding video editor. And I'm, I'm better at shooting more like uh, stories and things and landscapes and instructional videos, music, stuff like that. I, I don't always have the sentimental eye that it takes to be a really good wedding videographer. And uh, Eric is just helping me out. I know he'll do a great job. His son, I think Garrett's gonna help. Many thanks to Eric and Eric Silver and Garrett Silver. And um, just appreciate you guys. Love you so much, you just don't know. And I'm gonna do a great job editing this for Rachel. So Rachel, you're gonna have a nice wedding video, I'm sure. Uh, we're gonna shoot everything in 4K. It'll be just, I think, splendid looking. These cameras do shoot really great color and uh, Sony, Sony video is just fantastic. Uh, Eric, if you've got any more questions, call me. I'll be letting you have these cameras and you can mess around with them and experiment with them before the wedding starts. Peace to all who watch this video. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Maybe you got some good advice from my buddy Eric too, if you're a particular if you're a wedding videographer. Thanks.